Does anyone know what range spec is the easiest? This is a really tough question, isn't it? I mean, honestly, who could it be? I guess we will never know. I mean, people like to say that playing a caster requires having a big brain. But look here at Chanimal playing Warlock. He makes solo shuffle look ridiculously easy, juking every kick, landing every interrupt, and then perfectly kiting every melee, making them look stupid for even trying to attack. I thought Warlock was hard. We need to figure out what's going on. That's why we teamed up with Chanimal to make a brand new course exclusively for casters. Want to learn how to get better at kiting? We got guides for that. You want to land more kicks and juke like a mechanical god? We got you covered. We're even rolling out updates to all of our class courses with brand new guides, and a fresh update to the skill capped UI with member exclusive add on profiles that are guaranteed to increase your awareness. You can try out Skillcap risk free because we promise that you gain at least 400 rating while using our service. Get the rating you've always wanted by using the exclusive discount link below. Anyway, back to the video. After a bunch of reworks, we decided it's time to update our difficulty tier list. Once again, our criteria will be based on skill floors, not skill ceilings, since this is what truly matters for learning a spec. To be considered the easiest range spec, a low skill floor means having simple mechanics, which is still the most important, but we also need strong defensives and a straightforward win condition. Oh, it also needs to be good at winning, so we will be looking for specs with high win rates too. BM Hunter checks all of these boxes, but you probably knew that already. These days, BM Hunter is more or less a dot spec that is rewarded for training one target all day with damage that is nearly impossible to avoid. What's funny is that at the highest ratings, BM Hunters aren't even trapping healers anymore. They're sometimes trapping DPS on cooldown, knowing that they will automatically win in deep dampening. There's no getting around it. BM Hunter is arguably the easiest spec in the entire game. But what about marksmanship? Here's the bad news. Although marks technically avoids the whole getting kicked problem, it's still a bit easier to shut down compared to BM, and prior to recent buffs, it was definitely struggling, to the point where it was one of the least likely range specs to get 1800, and previously had one of the worst win rates up to rival ratings. Despite this, we're confident that marks will see a small resurgence in the coming weeks, as it now has a smaller damage profile compared to the past, before Overshadow was removed from the game. Marks will continue to be the classic clothy slayer, all with a relatively streamlined win condition. Trap the healer on CD and then blast whoever is in the open. Anyway, after recent tuning, we expect Marks to go back somewhere in the moderate to easy difficulty tier. But what does the hardest spec look like? Well, as we recently found out, all three mage specs are struggling to get 1800 relative to other specs. We still think that Arcane is the hardest spec in the game for most players. Infamously known for its single spell school, it can feel very unforgiving for any player without a decent amount of mechanical skill. Although it has seen numerous buffs so far this expansion, it still suffers the same structural problems as the past. And now, with the increasing popularity of BM Hunters, the meta in general is quite rough for mages. On that note, we also think that Fire is still one of the hardest specs to play, despite also getting some buffs multiple times throughout the expansion. On paper, Fire should be one of the easier range specs since most of its damage is instant cast, but right now it continues to take an absurd amount of damage, which often forces them to play super passive, and as a result, can make it difficult to close out games in a meta where people want to simply press W. Without a doubt, Frost is the best mage spec in the game, and at least one tier easier as a result. If Dragonflight was the last time you played Frost Mage, the spec has been watered down quite a bit, with less button bloat and more damage coming from Ice Lance and Frostfire Bolt, with Comet Storm being a small microbursting tool every 30 seconds. Once again though, the popularity of Hunters makes the meta a bit rough for the average mage player, and you really need to have great defensive skills while being able to capitalize on small burst windows in order to succeed. Frost will be going in the hard tier this time around, while both Arcane and Fire will be sharing a slot in the hardest tier. But what about Warlock? Right now, all three specs are looking quite competitive for the average player. The redesign to Affliction going into the War Within helped solve a crucial problem with the spec that it couldn't finish games by itself. Now, Affliction Warlock has some of the scariest bursts in the entire game, even after getting a few key nerfs during the early season. The spec has become incredibly straightforward with more kill potential than ever. Of course, it is still somewhat difficult to land casts in melee heavy lobbies, but getting a single precog is enough to quickly turn games around. 
Warlock is now even tankier than before thanks to a key buff to Demon Skin, which was probably the most beneficial to Demo, which is not only the tankiest Warlock spec, but as we recently found out, is one of the specs most likely to reach 1800 across all range DPS. Mechanically, Demo is probably the hardest Warlock spec overall, as it still requires a ton of hard casting, but in a recent buff called Dreadstalkers now grants a guaranteed Demon Core, which was a massive quality of life improvement for the spec, cutting down on the difficulty slightly. One key advantage Demo has over other casters is that it generates pressure passively simply by having a healing reduction effect. While its damage spikes aren't nearly as dramatic as Affliction, being able to passively pressure the enemy healer is a big deal. That leaves Destruction as our last Warlock spec, who also got a few key buffs in the early expansion, increasing its kill potential. Destro was already the easiest Warlock spec mechanically, as nearly all of its damage comes from instant casts. We've said this before, but it's basically an Ellie Shaman at this point. Overall, all three Warlock specs are in a good spot, despite having unique challenges. Affliction, Demo, and Destro will all go in the medium difficulty tier. But what about Elemental Shaman, the spec that has also seen massive gains so far this season? While it's true that the 05 rework made Stormkeeper a relevant ability again, Ellie is still blessed by the fact that the overwhelming majority of its damage is instant cast. Out of every caster in the game, Ellie suffers the least while getting trained, and its true learning curve is still just weaving in utility and disruption from time to time. In the past, we would have ranked Ellie as a moderately difficult, especially since it lacked agency to actually win, but right now its damage is so insanely lethal during Ascendance, which saw a massive buff in the latest rework. Shaman is also quite tanky, having multiple ways to deal with melee and hunter pets thanks to Earth Grab Totem, Nox, and so on. Overall, you just avoid a lot of the traditional caster problems playing this spec. Winning as an Ellie Shaman has never been easier, so it will be moving up one difficulty tier. On the opposite side of the spectrum is Shadow Priest, which is no doubt one of the strongest specs of the expansion, but has to hard cast nearly all of its damage, making it super frustrating to play in some lobbies. While Shadow was previously one of the tankiest specs in the game, the recent nerf to Void Leech has made it noticeably weaker. As a result, its win rate has tanked a bit, but it's still a solid spec overall. The need to hard cast their burst is what can make this spec so challenging to play. Not only does it have to channel Void Torrent to enter Entropic Rift windows, but then needs to spam out Void Blasts and Mind Flay Insanities in order to truly maximize pressure, something that definitely isn't easy with a wall of kicks and micro CCs standing in the way. Shadow is just one of those specs that can feel a bit bloated. It's like playing an Affliction Warlock, Devastation Evoker, and Sub Rogue combined, all while being packaged into the form factor of a hybrid DPS, giving it a ton of added responsibilities. Shadow is definitely a strong solo shuffle spec, but it's still a bit difficult to play in the current meta. Next up on the hybrid train is Balanced Druid, who is yet another spec that was considered relatively easy in the past but is far less forgiving to play. Doing damage as a boomkin isn't the hard part, it's relatively straightforward with some hard casting required to burst with Dream Surge. Carving out a win condition has also never been easier thanks to the recent rework to Incarnation, which now has two charges on a 90 second cooldown. When we first saw this, we thought Boomkin might instantly become the best solo shuffle spec, so what went wrong? The problem is that Boomkins take infinity damage and get trained to the ground most games. It doesn't matter that your damage rotation is easy or that you have an insane offensive cooldown when you're dead all game. The spec still has one of the highest death rates even after a few defensive buffs. Until the meta slows down, Boomkin is just a bit too unforgiving to play in solo shuffle and will be going in the hard tier. That leaves both Evoker specs as our remaining range DPS. At the beginning of the expansion, we ranked Devastation as very easy alongside BM Hunters, but now there's a pretty clear difference between both specs. Devastation is still very accessible thanks to the ease of dealing damage. It's not maintenance heavy like other casters and has a ton of spell schools to work with, all while being incredibly mobile. For a caster, its death rate is also quite low, so you're not really going to be the best target in most games anyway. And as we will continue to point out, carving a path to victory is always going to be easy with a big CD like Dragon Rage, which is a reliable finisher in the late game. Augmentation, on the other hand, is always a bit difficult to rank because, as we continue to say, your success on AUG is partially dictated by your teammates. Augmentation really hasn't seen many changes over the past few months and still has a relatively straightforward rotation. As long as you can maximize ebb and might windows, you're doing most of your job. The true learning curve of the spec is making use out of all the additional utility you have, like keeping up shields and trying to sink your breath of eons with your teammates' burst. Devastation will go in the easy tier now, and as tradition, Augmentation will go a tier lower. If you want to learn some of the best tips for ranking up fast, check out our brand new caster course, which can only be found at skillcap.com. And after that, head on over to our class courses to learn everything you need to start maximizing damage in the war within. 
Every season, we work with the best players in WoW, just like Channel, to produce the best PvP guides on the entire internet. You can try everything Skillcapped has to offer risk-free with a 400 rating gain guarantee. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back, no questions asked. You can unlock all of this through the exclusive discount you can only access through the link below. Alright, and that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.